and now i would uh, request vivek sir that uh, using all this knowledge how we can summarize and how actually we are treating these patients in your icu right now am i audible sir yes yes okay uh, very good morning to all my esteemed faculty members and to all of my hard working and a very very lovely student uh, see i always say you are soldiers and this time you have proven that uh, really you are soldiers so without wasting the time let's discuss the treatment protocols of uh, covid 19 these treatment protocols are basically uh the guidelines has been issued by uh, ministry of family uh, health and uh, fam ministry of family health and welfare so i am sharing my screen is it okay if i share my screen yeah yes sir you can share the screen sir i hope uh, you are able to do that sir you have uh, to share your screen dr vivek <laughs> yes sir yes sir now it is visible sir So guys, these are the treatment protocols which we have to discuss. The treatment protocol is basically uh, as similar as uh, Sir Mansur has said, but uh, there are some things which we have to segregate the patient into three categories. That uh, the patient is presenting with mild, moderate, or uh, very severe symptoms. So based upon the clinical criteria, irrespective of the patient is having uh, you know cough, shortness of breath, fever, all these are the symptoms. But when a patient is coming to a clinician or to a doctor, we categorize it into three categories that is one mild moderate and severe so how we segregate that looking upon the saturation rate looking upon the respiratory rate and obviously on the chest x rays or hrct so mild as you can see on the screen if the saturation level is more than 90 uh, 94% in room air and moderate is considered to be between on a little lower side 94 to 90% and severe is considered to be less than 90% on room air if the respiratory rate is categorized again as in the pneumonia classification mild moderate severe 24 24 30 and more than 30 will be the severe now no pneumonia pneumonia or severe pneumonia how we are going to categorize the simple based upon the clinical finding putting the test and asphalt taking the patient patient is having crep if crep fine crep then obviously patient is having mild symptoms of pneumonia or no pneumonia we can call it as or moderate patient is having bronchial breath sounds and a severe tubular bronchial breath sounds even irrespective of all this uh, uh, saturation less than 90% and respiratory rate of more than 30% and secondly when we do an hrct test we look upon the grading grade 1 grade 2 and uh, grade 3 4 so how we say how there is a corad score c o r a d s if in the question it is written corad grade 1 then it is no suspicion of or no contact of a patient with a positive uh, covid patient so we call it as grade 1 if there is suspicion and there is ground glass has been as then we say that the grade 2 or grade 3 if there is already fibrotic stage patient is having even ground glass consolidation then we call it as grade 4 or further so on we consider it so these are the mild moderate severe based upon this then we do some lab investigation so again the lab investigations is divided into three parts mild moderate and severe so what we see over here we see nrl that is neutrophil lymphocyte ratio if this ratio is to be between 3 to uh, less than 3.5 moderate is more than 3.5 and then my dear friend it is more than 5 so these all are the categories then we have to look for crp from examination point of view we just have to remember these what are the lab findings so what we focus upon this one is nrl neutrophil lymphocyte ratio crp increase level of ferritin increase d dimer ldh that would be lactate dehydrogenase interleukin 6 and liver function test so ask one question this is even you know uh, a test coming uh, in a very uh, big manner that interleukin sense uh, interleukin 6 is being done in a, a progressive manner to know the severity of the covid 19 patients and practically i am saying we are performing this test routinely so somewhere if we are getting between 5 to 50 we make it moderate and if it is more than uh, 50 let's say then it is severe uh, type of covid or uh, this one then coming straight forward to the treatment part 
now the treatment part consists of my dear friends one is mild moderate severe again this mild moderate severe routine we we have to give paracetamol no much drug no other drug to be given as we know that there are some rumors that we have to uh, prescribe hydroxychloroquine or something like this thing no my dear friends wait first of all let's start with the paracetamol antitussis then vitamin c tablet zinc as salman sir has also told now the question which is likely to be asked is this that either you have to recommend pentaprazole or omeprazole in which cases so my dear friends starting with omeprazole in mild and moderate cases and then in severe cases we have to start pentaprazole cases obviously we have to maintain the fluid or we can say that we have to maintain the hydration level in a very good manner and then my dear friends but in severe cases the chances of landing up into ards is very high that's why we have to give a very calculative mannered fluid that is called as conservative fluids we have to rush accordingly uh, apart from this my dear friends apart from this going further then we have to prescribe the another drug that is hydroxychloroquine now as i told you hydroxychloroquine should be prescribed in tablet form particularly in mild symptoms only to those patients who are at a risk of comorbidities or patients who are having comorbidities let's say patient is having diabetes patient is having hypertension ckd cld or there is a history of old stroke or patient age is more than 60 years patient is obese so no one is going to ask you the doses of uh, this but uh, although uh, we never know so i have just mentioned that on day 1 hydroxychloroquine should be given 400 mg 12 hourly followed by 400 mg once a day for 4 days now this hydroxychloroquine should not be given or we can say it is contraindicated if there is prolongation of qt interval more than 480 milli seconds so please revise this or you can line write this if there is prolongation of qt interval then hydrochloroquine is contra indicated then again in moderate cases we have to give tablet hydroxychloroquine the same protocol which we were following for the mild and even for the severe we have to do this now let's talk about the antibiotics antibiotics we have to start with azithromycin that is a macrolide plus in mild cases if as a thromycin is contraindicated for any let's say any reason then we can give uh, tablet amoxicillin right a favorite name is agamantin you many of you might be knowing this 625 mg 12 hourly should be given then in moderate cases my dear friends again tablet as a thromycin should be given 500 mg for 5 days if it is contraindicated then we can shift to ceftriaxone my dear friends ceftriaxone can be given if there are any other you know uh, secondary bacterial uh, infections or we are suspecting some other source of infection also but in severe cases as we also have previously discussed in pneumonia that a microlide plus carbapenems like uh, meropenem or pepsinazolvictim we have to consider in severe cases so three things to be known at this slide first not on every day should be given hydroxychloroquine if the patient is having mild symptoms from there we can start hydroxychloroquine then my dear friends antibiotic add on should be with azithromycin that should be from azithromycin if not then amoxicillin and then my dear friends in moderate cases we have to give for iv ceftriaxone and in severe cases we have to add on piperacillin tazobactam or we can call it as meropenem my dear friends then comes oxygen support now in mild cases i told you that the saturation is keeping more than 94% right so there is no requirement of oxygen first of all am i clear so 94% saturation pay we don't give oxygen we only start giving if the saturation is dropping below 92% let's say 92 se 96% pe aa jata hai then how we will give step by step manner first we will give the oxygen by nasal prongs and then if not then face mask then nrm what is nrm nrm is non breather mask then hfnc that is high flow nasal cannula at the rate of 10 to 
40 liters per minute if all these mask or prongs doesn't work and it doesn't keep the saturation above 92 to 96 percent then we have to give CPAP. CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure. Keeping this in mind, that what should be the tidal volume? The tidal volume should be as low as 6 ml per kg. And the PEEP positive and expiratory pressure will be some to 15 centimeter of water. And positive pressure should be 30 centimeter. So this is a high yield question. They may ask you, what should be the tidal volume to be started with in the case of COVID positive or let's say it's developing ARDS also. So CPAP score to be started with 6 ml per kg, uh, ml kg body weight case of start screening on low. Then my dear friends, in severe cases, we have to maintain the saturation of more than 90% and then again starting with NRM, that is non-grieving mask and then HNFC, high flow nasal cannula and straight away we can start CPAP score as earlier we started in moderate cases. If CPAP doesn't work, then we have to mechanically ventilate. We have to do the intubation and then we have to take the mechanical ventilation and the ARDS protocol to be followed. Now, what is ARDS protocol? Low tidal volume, high PEEP and a high FiO2. Am I clear? So I repeat, low tidal volume, high, high FiO2 should be the ARDS protocol. After this, when proning should be done. Now, what is proning, my dear friends? Proning means the patient has to turn back. He has to, uh, generally, we keep the patient in a supine position. So we prone the patient. The tummy side is touching the bed sheet and the back side is up face. So how we have to do the proning position in a step-by-step -step manner, in a part manner, let's say. How in part manner? That for 30 to 120 minutes, we have to prone the position. Total time is 30 to 120 minutes. This is another one MCQ. And we have to divide this proning, my dear friend. Sorry, 16 to 18 hours is the total time. 30 to 100 minutes prone time, simple proning. And then left lateral and right lateral proning should be done. And then, my dear friend, 30 to 120 minutes in an upright position. Question to be remembered over here, what are the contraindications of proning? Very simple answer, patient should be Contraindications, I am telling you, if the patient is hemodynamically instable, hemodynamically instable means patient is not maintaining his saturation, patient is not maintaining his blood pressures, or there is some arrhythmia, so it means patient is not having proper vital status, or patient is on inotropic support. Another contraindication, my dear friends, altered mental status and obviously pregnancy. We cannot prone uh, pregnant lady uh, into a prone position. So this is the prone position uh, for AIDS as well as, you know, end of the day, the COVID patient has land up into a ventilator state, they develop AIDS. So this is a proning uh, question is very important. Proning time is 16 to 18 hours per day divided into lateral position, left lateral, right lateral, upright and into spine position. Moving further, when to give the steroids? Mild cases, we need not to give the steroids. Moderate cases, we have to give steroids, and in severe cases, we have to give steroids. Now, what steroids we can recommend, my dear friends? First of all, we can have recommend dexamethasone. What steroids? Dexamethasone. If not dexamethasone, then the another drug we can recommend is methyl prednisolone. Am I clear? In moderate cases as well as in severe cases, we have to recommend dexamethasone or prednisolone. Chosen one, dexamethasone will be the answer. Then if the patient has landed up into cytokine storm from a pathology knowledge, you will be knowing how to distinguish between the cytokine storm. Then the drug use is tocolizumab. The drug use is tocolizumab. This is used for moderate cases and severe cases. So these are some of the treatment protocols leading further. Now, these are some of the trial therapies. These are not proven by the FDA or anyone, but they have been used on certain cases and they have some, some good results. Like remdesivir has been used, convalescent plasma. Now what is convalescent plasma? This plasma is taken from the patients who were earlier diseased with COVID-19, but they recovered. So we take the plasma and then we transfuse this plasma to a patient who is currently diseased. Then another drugs like lopinavir, 
ब्रिटोना बीट एंड बोथ कॉम्बिनेशन वी कैन गिव और वी कैन गिव इंटरफियर ऑन बीटा ऑल्सो वी कैन गिव ऑन अल्टरनेटिव डेज now another question to be asked over here that is the discharge criteria so what should be the discharge criteria again depending upon the severity of the patient was the patient mild moderate severe so how we will say the patient is now fit to go home or we can say the patient is fit to discharge in mild cases if the patient is a febrile with a history of more than 3 days no fever and we haven't used any antipyretics like paracetamol and there is no breathlessness and patient has 10 days of symptom onset from day 0 we are counting 10 days ho gaya hai isko and we don't require rt pcr or some more the covid 19 test we take another sample from the nasopharyngeal area that comes to be negative we can discharge the patient or we call it as mild patient and we see fit to go home now moderate cases my dear friends patient in all the cases mild moderate severe the fever should not be there for more than 3 days so fever should not be there at least 3 or more than 3 days history should be there in moderate again 10 days symptoms onset should not be there and there should be no oxygen requirement for at least 3 days i repeat no oxygen requirement for 3 days rt pcr is not required and in severe cases again patient should no should not have any history of fever or patient remains a febrile for 3 or more than 3 days patient shows clinical recovery repeat rt pcr from swab shows negative result and patient has been earlier shifted from the specific covid 19 or corona ward or covid care ward now this question is of immense importance that what is the post discharge advice so in all the cases irrespective of mild moderate and severe we have to isolate the patient and we say the patient to have your self monitoring of your health status of your respiratory rate of your temperature of your you know cough throat thing and everything you have to say and isolation should be done for 7 days at home after the discharge in respective of mild moderate and severe cases so this was all from my side so thank you very much thank you very much uh, vivek sir for uh, uh, thank you very much vivek sir for enlightening us and we really appreciate that uh, from the icu you have taken out uh, your time and uh, enlightened us about how Welcome, uh, the different categories have been defined mild moderate and severe Salman sir already nicely uh, specified earlier that how different different type of drugs can be used, and uh, you uh, took that into the account, and uh, uh, you have shown that how actually we are giving those drugs to these patients, what doses are required, how we are monitoring these patients, what are the key areas like in case of severe variety, uh, the fluid overdose should not be there because of the risk of ARDS. while for the mild and moderate things yes we do request the patients to take a lot of fluids just to maintain the hydration plus uh, you focused on uh, what should be the post discharge advice so i think it was really a wonderful wonderful session combining the uh, different aspects 